Well, it's New Year's Day 2020. My God, where have all the years gone? Well, as promised, I said I'd do a drawing on New Year's Day for those of you who are interested in me building a, I'm going to call it a stoker stick. <laughs> yeah, I first called it a fire stick and then I called it a blow stick. And now blow stick's kind of a weird name for it. So stoker stick, it, it stokes the fire. Now it's a really simple tool. It works like a bellows. And a lot of people say, well, how did you drill that hole all the way through? So before I do the giveaway or the drawing, I'm going to do a build video. So if you want to fast forward to the end of this video just to see if you won, be my guest. But I'm going to do a quick build. Well, not a quick build, but it'll be about 10 minutes long, I guess. So bear with me or fast forward. But in any case, Happy New Year. I hope it's going to be a profitable and happy new year to all of you. Thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel and more for 2020 is to come. So, Holly, come here. Hey. Hey, Hank. These are my dogs. <laughs> Big old dog. He's half Great Dane, half Great Pyrenees. And she's the smart one. She's the border collie. She rules the roost. Okay. Stoker stick is what I'm going to name this thing. I've decided that that uh, is probably the most appropriate name for it because what it does is it stokes the fire. Notice how mine has a bunch of texture on it. So as promised, I'm going to have a giveaway. And I'm choosing three names from the people who emailed me and I'm making three of them so I figured because some of you asked me for a build video I'll go ahead and do a build video and the thing that perplexes people is how did he drill that hole well it takes either a really long drill bit or a lathe with a drill attachment or ah, let's be a little bit creative here so let's go step by step first you got to choose your lumber and this happens to be a really nice piece of pear. And it's about an inch and a quarter thick. And it's pretty straight. I was able to hand plane one flat edge on it. But the face isn't dead flat. Now I, I could have run it through the planer and narrowed it all down. But I really kind of wanted that much thickness to work with. I want you to notice that I had my safety glasses on there. But it was pretty cold in the shop and my safety glasses started fogging up on me. So that was a situation where wearing those particular safety glasses would have not been too safe because I couldn't see as clearly. So I'm, I'm going to show you some of the mistakes in here. If you look closely, you'll see that the back side of that board actually rises. And if I push down on it, it would pinch the blade. But I, I am aware of it. Um, I could have put a feather board in here and that would have kept it tight, flat up against it. But because it had that little tiny bit of a, of a bow there, I wanted to be able to put pressure down on the front. Now, I can't say this is the right way to do this because clearly I am violating um, a pretty common safety technique. That's where you put the feather board. I, have, I do have a magnetic feather board that I use much of the time. But see that little thing? If I would have pushed down on it with the feather board now, it would have pinched in it and caused more problems. So using a table saw is a skill. It's probably one of the most dangerous tools in the shop. And okay, so what I did there is I ripped them all down to size and I squared them up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each of these in half. So I put a measurement on there and once again I'm not using a feather board because I wanted to put the flat side down on the bed and the other sides if there was any little imperfections on it the feather board would have actually pushed in too tight next to the, uh, the fence and possibly cause the problem. So, you know, ideally you want perfectly flat, dead, straight lumber, but that doesn't always happen. So, I'm working around that potential problem. 
I am using a push stick with a little notch on it. And I want you to pay close attention that I never get my hands anywhere close to the hazard zone. A lot of people buy this new tool called a saw stop, um, but I've, I've had my Powermatic for a long, long time. And I, you know, if they developed a saw stop for a chainsaw, I, I, I don't think I'd still use it because, you know, I, th that cutting piece right there, I, uh, I, I'm very, very cautious of it. I'm very um, confident in my ability not to touch that spinning blade or not to get close to the area where I'm going to lose my finger. Um, the saw stop kind of takes that out of there. So I do mark all my pieces after I've cut them in half so I can be sure to line them up because when you put these back together, you want them to be absolutely in the correct uh, configuration of the way that you separated it took it apart. Ah, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting these pieces through. I raise the blade oh, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch and I'm cutting a groove all the way down. And then on the same matching side on the second piece, I'm cutting it again. This is kind of long and drawn out here. I don't do a whole lot of build videos. I probably shouldn't be showing mistakes, but uh, if you guys are catching the mistakes, good on you because you've got to know how to work safely in a shop. I think I'm a pretty safe worker, but, you know, everybody has their way. So, now I bumped the fence over just a little bit, one kerf distance, and I'm going to recut these again. I did a little tiny bit of a test cut there just to see if I was leaving a, a little flap piece in the middle, and I'm not. So it doesn't take that long to do. I'm taking my time. I'm going slow. As I said, this is pear wood. It's very, very hard wood, and um, two of the sides are pretty rough, so it doesn't smooth. It doesn't run real smooth on the on the fence there. I you know I cut it in half and it wasn't a polished piece. So I'm taking my time. I don't want to I don't want to screw up. I don't want it to jam. Um, then once you get the two pieces cut in half and the two grooves lined up, you glue it back together. I bought one of these uh, little rubber brushes here. It's uh, actually designed for glue. I think I got it at Lee Valley or, or Rockler. I think it was Rockler. They were cheap, really cheap. But I used to use little disposable brushes for glue and then throw them away or, you know, a piece of wood or something. But a brush really works better. And this little, this cheap little brush here, when, you know, what, when the glue dries on it, it just breaks right off. So it's perfect. Then you've got to put it together. And you want to make sure that you make these um, joints tight, really, really tight. So I taped it all together first, but I did use a clamp to get it to that point and then ultimately clamped it good. And at the very end, with a clamp around it so that you don't cause any separation, um, I drilled out both ends. There you can see I've been working one on the right side. Um, one in the middle doesn't have anything. Those two in the middle don't have anything. So let me show you how I like to work them. Uh, there's so many ways you can do it. You can take it straight to a sander. You could stake it, you know, maybe cut the corners off of the bandsaw, you know, work it, the edges down. But um, I, I love working with these spoke shapes. I've got two of them. The spoke shape that I'm working with right now is from about 1860. Now, I'm going to leave the sound the same, but I'm going to speed this up, otherwise it would be a long, drawn-out video. Um, <laughs> the sound is soothing. If I sped up the sound, it would be annoying. I see a lot of people that do speed up their how-to build videos, and they speed up the sound with it, and I just think it sounds like, I don't know, just irritating. This is my favorite tool of all time. This spoke shave dates back to the, I was told, to the late 1700s. It was a gift to me by an old woman who got it from her great-grandfather, and she told me that he used to work with it, you know, back in the early 1800s, and he got it in the late 1700s. So this particular tool has over 200 years of craftsmen's hands touching it and using it. And something about, well, both of these. This one's from about 1860. 
And, and you know, when you work these tools, you, you really feel the the essence of the of the ancient craftsmen. I do anyway, but you know, a lot of people think I'm a little weird. I, uh, I I like to go deeper into my tools there and, and really get to know them well. And if they're sharp, it's uh, you know I, I sped this all up, but it's about a ten minute job really altogether. With the with the, I've got two sizes. You can see the size of the shavings that I'm getting, and you wonder why I'm doing two spoke shaves. One's cut thicker, one's cut thinner. Well, you know, I've heard the old saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's a strange saying. Who would skin a cat? I can see all the bays when we used to skin tigers and such. But anyway, there's more than one way to do the same job. So, depending upon how you want to handle this, you could use a belt sander, a standing belt sander. Um, I like to use this tool. You notice I've got the top peeled back so that I can access the uh, higher portion of it because a lot of times I, I will put sort of a texture in my tools. Uh, that goes for a lot of my uh, walking sticks as well. Something very tactile about um, the texture. If it's smooth, you've got to make it really, really smooth and really, really perfect. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is just a stick. Come on, guys. You know, it's just a stick with a hole in it for getting your fire going. You're going to throw it down by the fireplace. There's some of my walking sticks. I've got a huge collection of walking sticks in different stages. So this is the finishing point. You can finish it any way you want to. I like using different types of wood oil because it penetrates really well into the wood. You can see there it's... Um, these are the different stages. These are all three of them I'm working on. I chose pear wood. Uh, the last thing I like to do is put a, a coat of wax on it after the oil has dried. You know, you can buff it if you want to. You know, I've got this buffer so it goes really fast. But, you know, steel wool and a rag works just fine too. So my point is there's a whole lot of ways you could do this. You could use, you can cut it in half on a bandsaw. You can run a router down here. Here I've got this little piece of rod that I run in there because uh, once in a while you get a little tiny bit of glue in there or some sawdust that jams it up and do it from both sides and it clears it out. Quick blow, it goes through. The last thing I like to do is I like to put a little tang on there of some sort. Uh, drill it first because you certainly don't want to nail into a piece of wood like that and split the wood. You got these nice little brass nails. And I just cut these little tangs, you know, kind of bit of a tassel of, uh, of leather there. And the purpose of that is so you know which side to blow on. As some of you may have seen the video where I showed you what happens when you blow on the wrong side. But uh, here's one of my hammers. I got a nice little hammer collection. And I took the time to use a wood burner and put my name on every one of the hammers because, damn it, I hate it when people steal my hammers. So here's the name. 49 people emailed me for the drawing. All right, so this is the bowl that I've decided to put all the names into. This is a beautiful piece. I wanted to show it to you. The wood at the base is carob wood and maple burl. And the top piece is there. I thought it was walnut, but I think it's something else. A good friend of mine who's no longer with us made this for me years and years ago. And it's just a beautiful piece. So... This is the drawing bowl. And I'm gonna fold them all and put them in the bowl. Callie's gonna draw. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. All right, okay. hold it hold it up, stir it up really good. Okay. This totally is my daughter blind. Callie. This is a total impartial draw. Okay, number pick, one. Pick three. Just put them on the table and oh, we'll read okay. Them. Okay, one, one two, two, last one. Oh, you can't, just one, just one. <laughs> oh, three. Three, all right, go ahead and read them. Okay, number one, Teresa Argai. <laughs> You got Trent's handwriting. <laughs> uh, number two, Timothy Hampson. Okay. Uh, no, 
Number three, Greg Wilson. All righty. All right. Those are the three ones. I'm going to make them. Number one, two, three. Number one, two, three. All right. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. All right. For this last uh, two or three minutes, I'm going to show the photos that were sent in to me. I made the request that you send me a picture of your fireplace or your wood stove because really I wanted this to go to somebody who would actually use it. And I got a lot of interesting pictures. You know, some of these stoves, like that one right there, that one looks like it needs pretty uh, much restoring. But a lot of them, like that one right there, boy, that thing looks like a real house warmer. That's very much like the one I have in my house. There's an outdoor stove. Look at that thing. That's kind of cool. You know, I, there's no rules to this game here. I just wanted to see what you guys were all about. But I also got a lot of good comments. You know, some people included pictures of who they were or what, you know, what they do and a little bit about their family. There's a funny looking reindeer. There's, you know, a few people sent pictures of themselves. You know, hey, that's kind of cool. Um, I really enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I've been working on this channel for a long time here, and I see a lot of your names. This gives me a way to relate to you a little bit better. Um, I hope you continue to enjoy my channel, and, and this has been a, a fun New Year's project for me. I promise I will get these out to you. One of these people is in Italy. That's going to be an expensive piece of shipping there. But, you know, it is what it is. And one person there... First person from Italy was Teresio Aragahi. Aragi. I'm sorry. A R R I G H I. Next one was from North Carolina, Greg Wilson. And the last one was from California. That'll be an easier one for me to ship. Both of the states won't be a problem. But, uh, you know, seeing all these pictures was really a lot of fun. You know, it got me here. Yeah, I mean, there's somebody's dog, you know, hey. That's his dog. So I'm not going to go into who all these people are and all the stoves. You know, I, I can spend a lot more time in this. I don't want to offend anybody. But, um, wow, look at that stack of wood. That is art. I'm blown away. That's a beautiful, look at the saws on the wall there. That's, and that looks like a rocket stove. Somebody built their own little rocket stove. Now, there's a nice stove. Some people send in pictures of their tree work, you know. There's a guy, this guy's from Hawaii. He's, I can imagine him even needing a wood stove. But uh, maybe it's campfire. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it was a lot of fun. Happy New Year's to everybody out there. And thank you so much for participating. Uh, I did get 49 people say they wanted to be part of it. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Tell your friends. I'm trying really hard to grow this channel. Oh, look at that table. Wow. 